Hello and welcome to this video at 5 Scene 8, translated into modern English. It takes place in another part of the field. Macbeth enters. Why should I be like one of those foolish Romans and kill myself with my own sword? While I still see my enemies alive, I would prefer to kill them than they kill me. And then Macduff enters. And Macduff says, turn, you dog of hell, turn. Macbeth says, you are the one man I have avoided. But go away from here. I've already killed your family. I have your blood on my soul. And Macduff says, I have no words for you. I'll let my sword speak for me. You are too evil for words. And they fight. Macbeth says, you are wasting your efforts. You would have as much luck cutting at the air with your sword than making me bleed. You should fight someone who can be harmed. I am charmed and cannot be killed by anyone born from a woman. But Macduff replies, forget about your charms and let the spirit you serve tell you. Macduff was from his mother's womb cut out before she gave birth. In other words, I wasn't born from a woman. I was born by Caesarian, and therefore I am the one who will kill you. Macbeth says, damn you for telling me this because it's taken away all my courage. I no longer believe the evil creatures who have tricked me with their words and double meanings that have raised my hopes and then destroyed them. I will not fight you. Macduff says, then surrender, coward, and spend the rest of your days in a travelling show. We'll put you like rare monsters in a cage and paint it on the pole before it will say, here you may see the tyrant. Macbeth says, I will not give up to kiss the ground beneath young Malcolm's feet and to be taunted and mocked by common people. Even though Burn and Wood come to Dunsinane and you are not from woman born, I'll keep fighting to the last. I'll put my shield up in front of me. Come on, Macduff, and damned be the first man to cry stop. So finally the showdown. Macduff and Macbeth face off. Macbeth appears to scorn the idea of suicide. He says, why should I play the Roman fool and die on my sword? So he, he doesn't like the idea. He doesn't think it's honourable to try and just end it himself. So the fact that he says this may suggest that he has thought of suicide and, you know, kind of rationally decided it's a, a bad idea. Uh, but instead, then, he decides he just wants to kill as many enemies as possible. When he faces Macduff, there's something of the old Macbeth left. He feels immense guilt at killing Macduff's family and attempts to fob him off by telling him he doesn't want to shed any more of his blood. He also still believes he can't be defeated by anyone born of woman and as such has misplaced confidence. It's in this scene that he uncovers the final deception that Macduff was cut from his mother's womb rather than born naturally. This is devastating for Macbeth, understandably so, as this is the sole thing on which his confidence was based. Interestingly, Macbeth's first instinct when faced with this news is not to run. Um, oh, sorry, is to run. He tells Macduff, Macduff he won't fight him. He says, I'll not fight with thee. But after he's goaded by Macduff, he becomes the warrior Macbeth that we know from the opening of the play. And he chooses to die fighting rather than to be captured and humiliated. It's interesting that he has to be taunted and almost bullied into doing things in this play. First Lady Macbeth and now Macduff has to force him through insults to fight him. This is the final scene for Macbeth. He's gone through many changes throughout the play and to be honest is one of the few characters that Shakespeare presents in any sort of detail. He was fated as Scotland's best warrior, celebrated by his king and loved and respected by his peers. Through ambition, weakness and the influence of others, he threw it all away. He lost parts of his humanity, carried out horrific acts to try and hold to the slippery semblance of power, and ultimately ended up completely alone to face his own death. It's for the audience and you, the viewer, to decide if they can have any sympathy for him at the end of the key part um, of this play. But the debate really lies in the question of whether he was wholly responsible for his own actions, what part did Lady Macbeth play? What about the witches? Were they facilitators or simply bystanders in the decline and fall of Shakespeare's Macbeth?